out it goes. Away we go. Pretty good start from Jack Dwayne on pole position. Immediately Jack Kingsbury, his uh, championship rival in the finale here a couple of years ago, tucks in behind him. Tim Bentley, it looked like, made a pretty decent start as well as they head up towards Riches for the uh, first time. The cars all filtering through there. Was it still Jack Dwayne that held the lead? We'll hopefully pick them up as they head up towards the Wilson hairpin. Well, it wasn't, but it was Kingsbury that got ahead. A good start, too, for Tim Bentley as well. But he's now got Jason Pelosi trying to go up on the inside of him for third position. Very distinctive green and yellow car of Paul Clark there, one of the 182s in the middle of the pack. But a good start, this, from Jack Kingsbury to lead, possibly for the first time in a Clio uh, 197. Yeah, that's right. And him and Dwayne were very evenly matched yesterday. So an interesting battle to break up. Jason Pelosi retired from yesterday with a mechanical problem. He is right there looking up the inside of Jack Dwayne too. Ben Swift has also passed him Bentley. Pelosi slow through the middle of the corner though, so he's going to get swamped on the exit, I reckon. So Ben Swift and Tim Bentley try and go either side. Swift on the inside line, which is a tighter line through there, which is tricky, but he's done it. He's passed Pelosi. Then the class A lead in pack behind with Tim Bentley, Chris Lawrence, Oddie Wayne as well in there. So that's a really nice battle behind. But the top two have really got away after that mistake it would seem for Pelosi through the hairpin. Yeah, it did look like that, didn't it? It's cost him the position to Ben Swift, and we have got the three 182 leaders together, which hasn't always been the case this season, so we'll keep an eye on the battle that goes on there. You can also see the number 32 182, Matthew Walker also uh, well up the overall order as well, but uh, it's the grey car of number three uh, that leads the way. That's Jack Kingsbury, the man from Hartford, from Jack Dwayne, the Lincolnshire man in second place. Ben Swift, number 47, is third. 77, Jason Pelosi is fourth. And then three 182s together for the lead of the race. Tim Bentley under pressure here from Chris Lawrence and Ollie Wayne, who's been a winner in 182s in the past as well. They turn their way now through the bomb hole down towards Quorum Curve. And uh, I think we've got a good race in prospect here. Pelosi is alongside uh, Swift there for third position. Couldn't make it work, so it is still Swift hanging on, and as they battle, they're possibly going to slow each other up and allow the top two to get away. Yeah, they've uh, pulled a gap already, and like we said, they battle that be increasing over what should be another seven-lap race for the Clio Sport Championship. So it's Kingsbury, six tenths out front from Dwayne. Then that's sort of what unusual challenge from Pelosi and decorum that didn't come off so Ben Swift hangs on then the Class A leaders Tim Bentley Chris Lawrence the championship contenders to uh, Bentley who's been an overall winner four times he's been a class winner six times that's Chris Lawrence trying to come around the outside of him is this going to give Ollie Wayne the chance the banked corner is that going to come back to Lawrence on the exit I don't think he's going to gain the position off of Tim Bentley he's having to defend from Ollie Wayne so for Chris Lawrence, who's been racing for a few seasons after many years in karting, has been able to hang on, but that challenge to try and pass Tim Bentley, the multiple winner this season, didn't come off. So it's Bentley still in front as they come down in towards the hairpin. Turning their way through, Paul Clark's out of the race by the looks of it. He's pulled into the pit lane beneath our commentary position. Uh, that's a move being made by Charles Shelburne. Now, he started right at the back of the grid. He was up to 16th by the end of the first lap and continuing to, to make up ground as well. Here though on screen is the 182 battle, that's the Class A battle. It's for fifth, sixth and seventh places overall as well. They've got one of the 197s, Justin Griffiths, just in behind them uh, as well in that, uh, that mainly white car. But that's 86 Ollie Waynes in the blue car in third place, chasing after the 56 car of Chris Lawrence, the blue and yellow, the traditional Renault uh, motorsport colours. Up front in the 197s, it is still number three, Jack Kingsbury from number 11, Jack Dwayne. And it's a similar kind of gap between the third and fourth place cars of Ben Swift and Jason Pelosi. And then you've got the three 182s together. They turn their way through Brundle and Nelson. All pretty clean, all within the uh, curbs and white lines at that part of the circuit, which is not something that we've seen in all of the races so far during the course of the day. They turn their way now into quorum as well the leaders still not a lot to separate them as they come towards the end of lap two though josh yeah Dwayne came stronger in the second half of race one but kingsbury was right on his bootlet throughout the opening part of the race so can Dwayne do anything about the leader they've got to be conscious if they battle ben swift behind looks pretty quick and actually pelosi i think with the fastest lap of all a 218 9 so they're not the quickest, the top two in this race, which could leave them vulnerable later. 
But uh, here comes straight a huge look down the inside. That uh, didn't uh, come to anything. Then behind Jason Pelosi, the fastest man in the race, is on the inside of Ben Swift. There they are, wheel to wheel. What about the 182s? We have Justin Griffiths, the man whose car for sale is uh, getting involved in the 182 battle as well. The Hustle Motorsport car on the inside there of Ollie Wayne. The leaders, so they all stay in the same order despite we saw a number of numerous challenges. And equally, Justin Griffith's challenge hasn't come off yet, Ian. It's not. He's still going for it. It's Dwayne trying to outbreak Jack Kingsbury into the Agostini hairpin. He gets his car a quarter of the way alongside Jack Kingsbury's uh, number three car. And they're going to be yeah, took back in behind on the exit of the corner. So it's still the uh, car prepared by Ooh. Ricky Kingsbury that's in the lead. But it's off the circuit now. And is it going to stay out of the barriers? It looked like it might do just about. But... Uh, Jack Kingsbury there in the lead of the race lost it and that's handed the lead to to uh, Jack Dwayne of course he has rejoined the circuit now I think he's dropped in behind Darren Ransom maybe who was in ninth place so he's lost a lot of ground there as Jack Kingsbury but he was fortunate I think uh, to avoid contact with the barriers there. It's a huge off wasn't it? Lucky it didn't dig in and roll over because that would have been a massive accident so uh, thankfully for Jack Kingsbury that didn't happen but the race lead uh, the chance of a win is gone obviously uh, a huge moment really uh, big and then Jack Dwayne because of that he probably backed out of it and he, the gap's come down. Yeah because there was nearly two seconds between Dwayne and Ben Swift at the start of the lap it's less than a second now I would suggest it. I wouldn't be surprised if Jack Dwayne had backed out of that. Meanwhile amongst the 182s no change in the order uh, there and that it is still number four Tim Bentley from 56 Chris Lawrence and 86 Ollie Wayne and there's a big battle a bit further back headed by Chris Page who's in 11th place number 31 he's got uh, Joshua North behind him and also Alex Kilby in the number 85 car as well but the 182 leaders are just coming out of Murray's to complete lap number three Another thing about that spin, it shows you how quick that corner is, doesn't it? Because from the angles that we tend to get and from the spectator banks, it doesn't look as difficult as it actually is and how quick it is. So when it goes wrong, it was a bit of a strange spin, but the back end just came away from Kingsbury. And you can really see how quick it is through there and how dramatically it can go wrong. The lead gap's coming down even more now, isn't it? It's less than it was half a lap ago. So for Ben Swift and for Jason Pelosi, they're getting on terms with Jack Dwayne, who's won three races outright. He's the only driver to win. And that's, I think, three of the four venues as well, having won at Brands Hatch Croft and here at Snetterton so far this season. Can he win again? Well... He's uh, coming under pressure from it. Ben Swift, he has been a class winner. He won the second race at Silverstone in Class B. He hasn't been an overall winner, though. He's had a couple of seconds and a couple of thirds. He's there in second place, the airline pilot from Skegness. Um, so not probably one of his more local circuits, this here at uh, Snetterton. He's being chased by Essex man Jason Pelosi, who's there in third. But it's Dwayne still out front here, but they've got a real battle on our hands, I think. Yep, three for the lead then. Then they get back to the three for the lead in the 182s, <laughs> who are as close as ever. And they've got the 197s. Alongside them, we're going to get a change for second within that class as they go through Williams, number 86. Ollie Wayne gets his way ahead of number 56, Chris Lawrence. So Wayne now goes through to take second place. Can he keep hold of that, though? The 37-year-old RAF engineer from Nottingham. Started racing four years ago. Lawrence is going to try and fight back here along the Bentley Strait. The two of them are side by side. And they are still mirror to mirror, more or less, as they head into Brundle. Yeah, but it's the blue and yellow car that's just come out in front and then hops over the kerb on the apex of, uh, of Nelson there. Still stays ahead, but in doing so has lost a couple of car lengths now to Tim Bentley, who still leads within that class. Yeah, and he's got the biggest lead he's had in this particular race. As you mentioned, that battle on behind then. You've got Justin Griffiths and Darren Ransom and Jack Kingsbury trying to recover as well, just uh, behind them. But there's uh, Lawrence, then in 56, the, another Lincolnshire-based driver. As the top three go through, nine tenths of a second between them. And they are some five seconds or so ahead of the battle behind, being headed by Bentley, who's immediately back under pressure from Chris Lawrence. That gap he has has come down really quite rapidly. It has, so it's back to three for the lead in both of the classes then. And now we've got Justin Griffiths trying to make his presence felt again Ooh. amongst those uh, 182s. 
who are overlapping again on the exit of the Wilson hairpin. And it's going to be Wayne to the outside initially into pump, but then he took back in behind uh, Griffiths. Ransom as well in that battle. Jack Kingsbury uh, has done the best lap of the race in ninth place as he tries to recover at 2.19.49. He's about a second and a half behind, the, behind that group. Uh, actually, we, yes, we had a better lap a bit further up, haven't we, with the, with the leads early on. But to just do a good lap there, uh, Jack Kingsbury as he tries to recover. So we watch them heading their way into Hamilton. That's where Kingsbury, a couple of laps ago, had his big moment. No such dramas for these uh, 182s as they head now through Oggies. We've got just about four minutes to go. I would think two laps to go at the end of this one. Lawrence has dipped the wheel out over the dirt. He's immediately back on to Bentley, though. Every time he loses a bit of time, he regains it. I wondered if there was a small brush between him and Ollie Wayne at the hairpin at Wilson earlier, but it didn't come to anything uh, too drastic. So down the Bentley straight, uh, they run into the S's, which is up next. And Lawrence is challenging. He's on the outside of championship rival Bentley here, trying to pr pressurise Bentley into mistake, trying to draw alongside to make a pass. Well, neither of those is happening as of yet. Tim Bentley, who's come on as a driver really strongly over the last uh, couple of seasons, particularly. He uh, ran well last year, particularly in the second half of the year, and then started this year off pretty staggeringly with all those class victories. This weekend's been a bit more of a challenge from Chris Lawrence, and a big slide on the brakes there from Bentley. He's on a tighter line, and that might hold him and Lawrence back, perhaps giving Ollie Wayne the chance as they run up the centre straight to start the penultimate lap of the race. Which the 197s have already done, and there's a marginally bigger lead for Jack Dwayne this time by two hundredths of a second. Are they going to go alongside for the lead of the 182s into Rich's corner this time? It's going to be on the inside line, Tim Bentley on the outside line for Lawrence, but I don't think anything was going to happen as a result of that. Meanwhile, those are the three 197 leaders heading into Wilson. Here are the 182s heading into Wilson as well. Bentley with the inside line. Uh, Lawrence tries to get the overlap but fails to do so. And now you've got Jack Kingsbury up a position as well. He's ahead of Darren Ransom now and up into eight, so he's going to start to get involved in these with these 182s in the last lap and a half. Yes, uh, that's quite possible. We, Justin Griffiths will be for point. The others won't be um, for Kingsbury, but uh, he will want to get as many positions back, I am sure. And he's on the inside of Justin Griffiths, who gives him space. I think he knows that Kingsbury is quicker here and he allows him through. So Jack Kingsbury back into seventh. He's gained two positions already on this lap. And now he's got those three 182s. And I'm sure he'll be conscious that they are battling for a class victory between themselves. Bentley, Lawrence, Wade on the brakes into the right-hander at Augie's. And then things that are right up towards Williams. So a real big battle pack here. But Tim Bentley, seemingly unfazed he's not uh, come under significant pressure as of yet in this battle and they head up the uh, center straight uh, uh, up the uh, bentley straight where already the leaders are at the end of a jack Dwayne equally since he was caught by ben swift hasn't seemed to have come under an actual attack really from swift and then pelosi behind then we look back to see what's happening behind. Is it still Tim Bentley? No, it's not because Chris Lawrence has got down the inside into Nelson and that is going to allow Ollie Wayne through as well, I think. So Chris Lawrence has taken the lead of the class at a critical time and Ollie Wayne has followed him past it, but then runs wide. <laughs> so Tim Bentley is back on the inside for Corum. Jack Kingsbury thinks about making it free of breath, thinks that's not the brave, the brightest idea ever. So he hangs on behind them. So Bentley's just lost the one position, but Chris Lawrence has fought his way through then to the front of the class. Last lap getting underway now for the leaders. Jack Dwayne extending his lead to 85 hundredths of a second, so very nearly one second now for Ben Swift and Jason Pelosi. That is the lead that Chris Lawrence has in the 182s. Now it is about three quarters of a second over Tim Bentley and Ollie Wayne. Do we get a challenge for second within the 197s? Well, Pelosi is having a go now at number 47, Ben Swift, who's had a, a good comeback weekend after getting into the top six yesterday and running in the podium position today. But can he hold on to P2 from Jason Pelosi in the closing stage of this race? It looks like Jack Dwayne out front is a little bit more secure in the lead of this race. Yes, uh, that is for sure. After that challenge we saw from Pelosi, 
that's just held Ben Swift back a bit. What's happening behind? Well, Chris, every time someone grabs the lead in the 182s <laughs> by a gap, the gap comes down, and Tim Bentley's right back on terms with Chris Lawrence. It's really bizarre, isn't it? So it's not that Bentley was slower, I don't think. Maybe that is the uh, fast uh, tow we are seeing in operation today with that blustery conditions we've got. Yeah, with that headwind down the, uh, the Bentley Strait, tailwind along the Senna Strait. This is the fight for second. They're heading on to the Bentley Strait now. The second and third place cars in the 197s, Class B. And Swift in second and Pelosi in third. They are about five seconds clear of the uh, 182s. Just coming into view now on the exit of, uh, of Williams. And it is still Chris Lawrence that's ahead of that group by a little bit, I think, from... Uh, Tim Bentley in second place within Class A. But Jack Duane continuing to lead. He heads through uh, Nelson now out to the bomb hole for the final time. We'll just wait for the 182s to come into shot. He's still pretty close amongst the first three there. Chris Lawrence, 56. Ollie Wayne at the rear of this group in 86. Sandwiched in between them is the man that's had so many wins this season, number four, Tim Bentley. But Jack Duane now in the overall lead is through the final corner at Murray's and he accelerates his way through the right hand curve and up the center straight. And the check flag is out. There's a five second penalty for someone. We'll try and work out who that is right at the end. But it is Jack Duane that takes the checkered flag then from Ben Swift in second and Jason Pelosi in third place. 